around and presuming this is maybe a C hit. So biding their time here, X10 are about to find out a much easier site to push into. And with Zephyr falling, the A side is theirs. What's my, he's just running out. He's going for it with the Phoenix. I love it. And it's working out for two kills. Oh no, this looked like it was going to be clean, but we end up in a 2v3. There's some real possibility for them to turn the tide here. They do look to get themselves the plant. Breon, however, incredibly low, but Neth with a cheeky peek. He's always been known for those clutch situations. Vulnerability placed as well onto foxes, meaning a little bit easier to kill, but it doesn't last for long. They're trying to bait him in with the plant, and actually it has worked. Breon's just swung on it. 10 seconds left for Sushi Boys to try and bring this back. His turret's even got him a kill, and now it comes down to the 1v1, the jump over the top, and it's the turret again. What? It somewhat makes sense. But we're going to see a fast push here, straight into B. Oh, yes, we are. Fox, though. Oh, he's vulnerable. And Munchkin's taking advantage, popping his head straight away. Medusa in through the smoke for another. Crazy raccoons are not letting go of this B side. The crossfires are strong, but scary. Even with the Spectres able to get a double. Patapan in with another, and we're tied up. This is a bonus round for X10, and they're making it look very, very good. Patapan caught in the corner. They know that he's here. They've tagged him up. They're reconning him, and this round is over and done with. Gonna get pressured though. Scary the one to fall. A lot of the utility disappears with him. They have in turn used the Viper's Pit onto B, and with no challenge there, they're actually just gonna have an after plant. Of course, it's gonna be made that a little bit tougher by the fact that they have lost their utility man, and Munchkin is already gonna be finding a trade. Neth with another. That is actually Panipan gone, so as well as his utility will fall. And now it's left all onto Foxes, and he doesn't spot the flank of Rio coming in with that disgusting shotgun. <laughs> There will only be one player who can contest them, especially with the Cosmic Divide and the Viper Wall. It's Munchkin in the corner, and he is dealt with right away. Now the plant is pretty much theirs, especially with Lockdown coming into play from the defenders. They oh, he's trapped him! And I think he's going to be stuck by it. That's beautiful. The suck coming in to completely keep them in position, but they can't afford this two players who aren't detained. They can't just run forward and look for these duels. And instead, oh, oh until no. he's just buying so much time. Now all of the ultimate is just negated. And it's a one versus three that is, well, virtually unwinnable for Ness. Really well recovered by X10. Like you can just put down a guiding light. All right, put it in the, the corner there if it doesn't see anyone, you're clear. I like the dash, I like the play. Fox, he is here today. Crow's coming in with more. The flash is so good, but it only gets Munchkin one. And with that, Crazy Raccoon's around that they needed to win. They're now left into a situation where they, they have to save. Push coming in. Zephyr in a good position. The dart's actually perfectly placed. They use it as a direct counter to try and hold that player back. Munchin catches one, but he just, Medusa just goes running in. And now Cruz has found another onto Zephyr. It started off so strong, but they just get too aggressive. Make a silly mistake, and that's going to be enough. The spike planted, one player left. Neff, as said, I, I think he's excellent in a lot of these clutch situations, but a 1v4 pushing back into the A site, I don't think he's that good. But they need something here. Seven to two down. Yeah, no, they, they need something. And it, at the moment, at least, it started out well. And now they're coming in the form of crows falling. Okay. It's, uh, it's something to play with here for Crazy Raccoons. And Zephyr, oh, nice shot to scary. Okay, we're back in the driver's seat here, but X10 have a potential 2v1 fight. It's Medusa, who only has a sheriff, a shock dart crew to tickle them up. There's the recon, but Fox takes him down. Now the plant can come through, but Fox has taken quite a bit of damage in the meantime. The flank, oh no, was that a fake up draft? I like it. Trying to get the players to peek out on short, and Sushi Boy is able to pick up one. Fox, Vandal in hand, looks for the headshot. Munchkin able to sideswipe. And so it's all down to the 31 HP jet player. But Munchkin deals with him. A nice round for Crazy Raccoons. Think of ways to get, to get back. I don't know what you, you mean. Know. Somehow. It'll ha oh, no. Sushi Boys gets traded out, though. That's such a good push. I love that. Munchkin ults down to get the information. And they trade from up above. And at worst, they get free control by him just running down. If they've all left, well, at least they've got that information. 
gorgeous play to start it off. And now it's a 5v3 X10 on the back foot, but they're gonna look to recover this with a B push and a Viper's Pit to completely cut out the A side heavy play that we've had consistently coming through. Now, as they look to re-enter into the site, they're going to have to deal with this Viper, but Patapan's all alone. Now they know exactly where he is. The spams are coming in. He's 27 HP, but he saw the barrel. Now coming in through the Viper's Pit, a brave play. In the control at the start of the round, it's really nice. I love that spam from Neth to destroy the Seekers coming for him, and Zephyr oh. picks up Crows. That's a great start to the round, but he's kind of isolated on the site, still with a dash to play with. That gets pulled out very early on. Cloud Burst into Get a it. shorty for the close range duel, and that pays <laughs> off. Oh my god, Zephyr, what a round! Not an adaptation we see all too often. And Patapan, he's left alone and shock darted to death. What a great recovery! This round, like crazy raccoons, and this map, it's not disappointing. The pistol round, oh, oh my god. god, it's a brawl. They are just going for it, sending it down through a long, and it looks like Zephyr's gonna have to have some heroics yet again. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the HP to make the 1v4 happen. And they have at least forced a player to rotate. Oh, Sushi, come on, man. This time he can at least see them swinging out for more and he's gonna just back off. Great opening duel. And then in comes the operator, but Fox misses the shot, receives a lot of damage. Sushi up close, able to deal a lot to Munchkin. He's now super low HP and the operator cleans him up from the high ground. The swing by Scary. And that's exactly why he's called that. A two versus one, Rion comes to site with 10 seconds left, no info really, and now no health to play with. A flank underway. This one is done and dusted, and you see it there with S -S -S Scary on a triple kill yet again. Already pushing through that. That's the running back gone. It's basically lost for destroying a turret, a trade. Probably not worth it. Sushi boys as well, still just surviving in the corner. It is only going to be one for one, but then the trades just come back thick and fast. It's left onto Neth once again. He's had a couple of attempts at these one versus fours. I can't say I'm a believer, though. Look at the flank. They're going to pincer him from him, surround him on all sides. Although Foxes does peak a little bit early. He hits a second dink, but... He's been caught by the AWP again, but it... Okay, well, that flash, that peak, that adaptation on the fly. I love it. The repositioning comes in once more, but this time, Crazy Raccoons win both fights. Two swift Vandal headshots, and the lead is suddenly theirs. The spike is planted, and X10 are locked out. They have no flank. They have nothing to really play with a Cosmic Divide just to lock them out even further. He's not committing to the full flank. Producer, at least that should be information that there's two players here it doesn't matter though zephyr goes for the aggressive take gets nothing for it and now they're just being traded out one by one they're gonna try and put oh down that God. lockdown to force them back and then he's actually putting in a real shift here another kill comes up for him patipan on the flank though is more than perfect it's left all onto the killjoy to try and clutch them out we've mentioned him in multiple 1v4s he needs the 4k here to keep them in this map Panipan rounding the corner, the time ticking away, the snake fight held back Neth, at least for the moment. He's just playing with the time, doing so well to deny any chance for Panipan, and we'll even close it with the headshot as well. Hey, so this looks like a fast take into A Mitch. It does indeed. Munchkin's already sending it in, getting the information, but Patapan keeps on going straight through his own orb to look for those duels. He goes back and catches them by surprise. And what? Wants to count for three. He's on the backside and eventually taken down. But it's a 2v2 now. This is a winnable situation. The armor stripped from Munchkin after his ultimate was just completely thrown away. Grabbed information that nothing was capitalized on and the ultimates, oh, they are here to play with. We've also got a Cosmic Divide that can be used to block out long and potentially get them at least to start on the Diffuse and force out some early oh. plays. But that is such a good peek by Munchkin. He's going to be in trouble. Detained on the backside, and that is a free kill. But left down to the 1v1 considering the situation, that is very strong. Scary taps it, player comes out, and the shot connects for Rion. Expect him to at least get one here. He this to. angle's so hard to clear, especially against the Judge. The dash up though actually ah. works, but they haven't cleared him. Ah. He's still in this corner. They haven't seen him at all. And it's just going to be scary doubling up. It comes down to one man. Medusa to save them. I said this will be the round that probably ends it. I hate the judge, but somehow X10 have closed it with that gun. Patience, but he also knows that there's a turret in play here. Perhaps a cloud burst on top of it to sneak on through. We'll see exactly what he decides to do as the A side is under threat and being overrun. The cage, the cam, and Sushi Boy wants to make a big play. 
see if he can do anything. Oh, this is going to potentially be huge. I thought he was going through the cage off the cam, but no, instead he's going to tuck in because they've already got the opening duel. Oh, he's managed to bypass the turret completely. They even know he's here, but it just doesn't matter. It's going to be a couple of kills off the back lines and scary to close it out as well. The patience now setting themselves up for close range duels. That's where things like the Bucky can get a lot of value. Ooh, Ooh. Patapan, he almost goes down on his way out, but he'll survive just a few seconds longer as Zephyr takes him out. Here we go with the spike being diffused. The denial comes in with utility and scary in a one versus three oh, no. actually has the potential to deny this even further down comes the snake fight the orb is up and they can't get the defuse the time is too he's low he's actually won the round he's got three kills and the spike explosion confirms that a third round is there for x10 what a phenomenal clutch uh, interesting because it's come in from the defenders possibly not hitting the mark that they expected it to net nonetheless is still able to do some damage some serious damage in fact taking down sushi boys before the trade is eventually there the man advantage now resides with crazy raccoons and medusa well he's not happy with just that oh. but a whiff shot it pulls x10 back into the lead and arranged fight vandal versus sheriff well that is a predictable victor who comes away with it zephyr hasn't been spotted that's a free kill okay now we're down to a two versus two the flash comes out, but doesn't receive much. Inside of the Viper's pit, they are safe to get this plant. But they're scared. They're scared of Rion dropping right on top of them and dealing with them right away. And instead, left. they'll walk out of the pit backwards into the Sheriff. And Rion very nearly whiffs that one completely. Walking away with the kill, but so too does Crows. And the rotate to B is going to be treacherous. Zephyr is already on his way, but he doubles back. He's going to instead go below the tube. It costs him an extra couple of seconds. He won't be there in time to deny the plant, but perhaps to catch him on the way back. No, just a second too late. He knows he's up above. He heard the rope, and there we go. Zephyr gets it done just about. Starting it out, an operator shot rings through, but no kill on the board. Medusa forced into the open. Now 27 HP, and they still check the corner despite the aftershock already clearing it. This is uh, a little bit tough. Hadapan drops down from above again, an op shot ringing, but no connection. <laughs> And I'm starting to get a little bit worried. It looks like Crazy Raccoons will have to play a retake on this one. And if they push on through, Patapan's position will almost certainly catch them off guard. Odd that he has a guardian in this spot. But hey, if it works, it works. And let's see if it does. They're baiting it out. They suspect he could be close. And now dealt with, the man advantage comes back to war for just a second. Oh my God, Crows. That was nasty with the headshots. And now they have the advantage. It looks like they have the round. Neth again needs a double. The first goes his way, but scary saves the day. Four to one. Ashrams from Crazy Raccoon. Instead, they're going to have to face off against this after plan. Nice shot though from Rion. That's scary gone. And now this becomes a real possibility as that after plant is nowhere near as strong. The only thing they have to deal with is going to be Sova. Now there's definitely a possibility, Fox. Unable to connect it in the back lines. And here comes the Hunter's Fury, a free kill, but they know exactly what they're doing. Sticking it halfway. Now it's time to get on it yet again. And it looks like it's theirs. Well handled by Crazy Raccoons. They don't, they're not afraid to lose a weapon or two, to lose a player. Such a strong position, giving his teammates the chance to take the site almost for free. They're going to hear the plant, but they don't know that he's in such an aggressive spot and actually looks to continue this, almost just baiting them in to fight him while he just falls back and makes sure his teammates are kept safe. They've also got the Viper's Pit, which makes this retake all the more impossible, especially when you have an operator. Like, you'd have to hit a one in a million shot to catch a player through this. Luckily... We are seeing the comeback of Medusa, a pretty slow game from thus far, but three kills already in this round. Oh, there's the possibility. Maybe it'll take it all the way. Zephyr's not in the best spot. Well, when he's shot in the back, it's a little bit worse. Medusa, look at the decay. He's taking so much of it as he walks out and barely misses Scary. And it looks like the rotation as well from Crazy Raccoon is almost spot on. They've got the whole team here, the whole crew just rolling around. And Medusa, he's just going to deck two with the pistol. How did they do this? Is that three out of their four rounds now that they've won with pistols? 
They know there's players outside of A, and the Rolling Thunder actually connects to all three players. Oh! Doom Boy's able to catch a kill on the back of it. The walled up Munchkin gets nothing for his troubles. The Odin up close. Oh, God, Medusa. He almost got caught. This is looking a little bit scary, honestly, for the full bot side of Crazy Raccoons. Pistols yeah, are tearing them apart. Pistol. Down a. He's gone back to himself. They've actually burnt out on ultimate as well. The lockdown being invested just to try and force Sushi Boy back. He's going to hit another one. His third kill of the round with the Sheriff. Pistols really are king. And he's going to go for the fourth. This is unbelievable. Down to the one versus one for Sushi Boy. He's looking to try and get an extra round. And he's so close. Very early rotation coming in from Crazy Raccoon. Three players already wow. here on the site. And Freon actually gets away with that, but there's a shock dart from Foxes. Trades back thick and fast into this 3v3 situation. Yeah. Neth lurking around the edge. And actually, there's been a cross of paths. That is the spike going round behind him. This is all going to come down to timing. And Crows, he's found the kill. Sushi Boy is up there behind him. It's left all onto Zephyr. Well, they know exactly where he is. The neural theft gives him away, and I don't think he's going to attempt this. Takes or maybe a few early positions. But I, I'm loving all the utility they're using just to make every duel really awkward for Zephyr. I feel like he hasn't come into his own just yet, but there's a pick, giving them the man advantage back. Foxes is just running it, though. In fact, they're just running the gauntlet all the way. They've been spawning these early rotations, Mitch. And because of that, there's only one player defending. Was he spotted? Oh, well, definitely now. Yeah. They're taking the duel. The shock dart to come oh, on no. through. Deal serious damage to Neth. And Sushi Boy's ready to take another. The plant coming in. But Medusa's sneaking around the backside. That player was so low. If it wasn't for that drone, he could have wall banged. He could have gotten the kill. But instead, these players, 30 and 78 on Sushi and Fox, are able to play a post plant. They're able to go back nice and passive and hopefully close out this final round with the man advantage they have running down the clock. Crazy Raccoons have a Hunter's Fury to play with and they might try to deny some space using it. Medusa though, straight away, shutting them down. Fox with one and now the time is theirs. Surely look at the sneaky play by Sushi Boys. He's already around, but he gives away his position. There's time here for Medusa, but now it ticks away too far. It's done, it's dusted. Medusa, four kills, but no chance he gets that diffused. <laughs> He's going to flex on us at the end, earn a few style points and go down to the spike bit. And I'm looking to destroy the turret, but it's Zephyr to get the trade instead. Leaving things back into a 4v4 and so much counter utility just being put into this one. It's going to make things quite awkward. Rion still with a couple of snake bites available to him, but it's actually Crows just pushes straight through. Already starting to dominate, but there comes those Octoplas. I don't think it's going to do enough, though. They'll just defuse Rion a little bit too late with the snake bites, and that's enough for the pistol to be stolen away. Cam. It's the same cam. Identical. Same position. <laughs> Pulls off it. Here comes the recon through the peak by Sushi Boys as they turn to look at the recon. Oh. It's so good. Baiting the utility. Old goes down. So too to Sushi Boys. So too does Fox. What's happening here? A bit of over aggression, perhaps. Cruz. Oh, Crows, excuse me. Pops out that flash. Takes the kill to Neth. Gorgeous stuff. And now just buying time for his teammates to set up this double peak. Oh, I love that from X10. He's going to get stuck in that ultimate if he doesn't go anywhere. And eventually the footsteps are going to be given and he'll escape. The site will be taken, but they're going to have a very quick response. In fact, they could get in even before the plant comes down. Yeah, I think especially with the tripwire on the right side, they know that nobody's going to be incredibly close as they come in and the camera's still online. This is actually pretty huge for X10. As they come in, they oh, just no. dominate the duel straight away. Neth is able to pull off one, but immediately afterwards, he is shut down by Sushi Boys. Over on this A site, Panapan going to pop the ult. They know that they can utilize what? this one and just dives through and just ruins Monkey. Oh. Comes back for a little more. Panapan is styling a 3k again out of the blade storm there's two players left make it just one mitch that's done it's done and dusted net he's been huge before the rolling thunder to just secure it fox Defenders takes win. him out but that's the kind of jet i was looking forward to see from this region <laughs> the the confidence on display by patapan in this series has been <laughs> unbelievable and you can see he's pretty happy about that win